Welcome to the MSing About YouTube channel. Now, while I have MS, the emphasis is more on messing about than MS. I might choose to chat about those so-called good old days of the 50s and 60s when I was a kid, or share some anecdotes about my travels, or brushes with fame I've had, who knows. Let's kick off with a blast from the past. This is a cassette. It provided audio entertainment before CDs. And these cassette covers were from a satirical radio series I wrote on called How Green Was My Cactus. I only wrote on the first few hundred episodes. My writing partner, Doug Edwards, went on to produce over 5,000 episodes over 33 years, making it beat Blue Hills as Australia's longest running radio series. Now, in 1989, the inspiration for one of the characters from Cactus celebrated his 60th birthday. Prime Minister Bob Hawke and his wife Hazel were portrayed as King Bonza and Queen Hayseed. And we found out Bob was having a lunch party in the grounds of the lodge in Canberra. So as a publicity stunt, we arranged for a skywriter to fly over and write, Happy Birthday, King Bonza. Well, we received a lovely Christmas card from Hazel, thanking us for the best wishes and saying that she and Bob listened and laughed along every morning. And sometimes we had them sharing a bath, cutting each other's toenails. You've got to love this country. Now, I don't have many reminders of writing for the sitcom Kingswood Country. This was a prop from an episode we wrote about Ted promoting a beer called Big Bitter. Now, I snaffled it because the props department had a dry sense of humour. See, along there it says, this beer contains amphetamines. That was before I knew what amphetamines were. Not that I'd really know now. Now, Ross Higgins played the lead role of the lovable bigot Ted Bullpit, and Ross once asked me if I'd help write his memoir, Well, I happily agreed. Apart from knowing he'd been a professional singer, a voiceover artist and an actor, all I really knew that he was a really nice man. Too nice, it turned out. You see, once Ross got away from in front of the camera or behind a microphone, he went home to his wife Nadine and the kids where he nestled snugly into the role of playing a loving husband, father and provider. The most exciting thing he did each week was clean the pool filter. I remember a recording session for a commercial and Roscoe asked the advertising executive what sort of character he had in mind. And the executive said, just use your own voice. And Ross thought for a minute and he replied, I do characters, I don't know what my own voice is. And that's what a memoir should be, your own voice. Mind you, Ross had a fear of germs and when the kids had birthdays, they had to fan the candles out rather than blow germs on the icing. But there's no book in that anecdote. Now, one quirky thing with Ross, he was very protective about telling anyone how old he was in case he was typecast as an actor. The Kingswood Country producers even thought about getting a cop uniform out of the Channel 7 wardrobe department and having someone on a motorbike pull him over and ask for his driver's licence. I only found out his age when he died in 2016, aged 86. Now, I'm not old enough to remember when Cole's funny picture books were first published. That was in 1879 but they still amused me in the early 1960s. The front cover promised to delight children and make homes happier. And they were packed with diversions, poems, songs, brain teasers, mazes, historical facts, games, cartoons, quirky stories, and inventions like Snook's patent whipping machine for flogging naughty boys in school. And there were puzzles. I remember overhearing my parents trying to guess how old a friend called Mrs Mack was. She was the minister's wife. Mr and Mrs Mack were visiting one afternoon and having a cuppa while I was reading my picture book on the carpet. Mrs Mack, I asked, can you help me with some maths? It was one of those confusing puzzles where you had to pick a day of the week, add 50, double it and subtract 6 and so on, until you got a seven-digit number with the last two digits telling a story. So, Mrs Mack, I said, you're 48 years old. Could have heard a pin drop. I'm not sure it made home happier. I could have done that with Ross. 
Now, I'm not sure if you've been catching the MSing about podcasts, but here's 20 minutes abridged into about two. Did you know that honey is the only food in the world without a use-by date? It does not go off. They found honey in the pyramids that was still fit for eating. Only the female bee can sting, and the male bee's job is to mate with the queen. Bees have four wings, six legs, and five eyes. And the buzzing sound they make comes from the speed they can flap their wings 200 times a second. Don't know who counted that. And they get so tired that sometimes they curl up in a petal of a flower for five or six hours a day to sleep. And get this. They'd like to do this while holding another bee's feet for company. (gasps) And now to a couple who really knew about holding each other. This podcast left me slightly gobsmacked. It's about twins who were born in 1811 by the names of Chang and Eng Bunker. You see, they were conjoined at the hip and were not only a curiosity but a medical phenomenon. They were taken from Thailand to America for scientific study and they became American citizens. Seeing an opportunity to get rich, they toured the country and the UK and Europe as a freak show, billing themselves as, wait for it, the Siamese Twins, thereby giving the name to all conjoined twins. For a squiz, they charged 25 cents. That's about $7 in today's money, and they became extremely wealthy, wealthy enough before the Civil War to own slaves. But here's the bit that made my mind boggle. They fathered 21 children, 10 to Chang, 11 to Eng, and it meant that every conception had to be a threesome. Incidentally, they died at the ripe old age of 62 with causes of death being a cerebral blood clot for Chang and for Eng, fright. I guess it's hard to be calm when there's a dead brother hanging off your hip. Now, let's move on to slide night. Back in 1978, when I travelled for six months with my mate Pete Mitchell, we took a side trip to London for a bit of culture, to the home of the Bard. Stratford-upon-Avon, to see Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra. It was starring Oscar Emmy and award winner Glenda Jackson. It's not my favourite of his plays, but Glenda was fabulous. And the next morning, we happened across a village fair next to the river that had a great atmosphere. It had pigs on spits and Maypole and Morris dancers, and it was somehow medieval, apart from Sideshow Alley. And walking through that part, we noticed the shooting gallery where two pretty young ladies were giggling merrily at missing the targets. Well, so Pete and I exchanged glances. Why not? Over we went and asked them if they'd like a teddy bear to take home. Pete and I had grown up in the bush and we were both good shots. My father taught me to shoot with this 22 rifle. Like me, it's now disabled. Anyway... He didn't let me shoot rabbits or ducks until I'd mastered hitting those little reflective diamonds on roadside posts. Anyway, Pete and I blattered down the little tin ducks and we presented the girls with the fluffy toy each. They were pretty, the girls, not the toys, but they were twits. So with another exchange glance, we rode off into the sunset, Aussie legends. Not that we were averse to to enjoying the company of the fairer sex, And uh, while I think it's bad form to talk about old girlfriends, failed conquests can be funny. So let's head a little further north to Haworth in Yorkshire. We went to experience the home of the Bronte sisters. It's a very pretty little village and just out of town are the wily, windy moors. That's Top Withens, the inspiration for Wuthering Heights. Now, it wasn't all about museums and literature. After a night at the local pub, I found myself walking arm in arm down mooncast cobblestones with a rather pretty young lass. She said that she lived with her parents, but that they didn't mind boys turning up at breakfast, and I planned to make my exit well before bread could become toast, as in fact did happen. One of the parents was waiting up. Now, Dad was a short man with a waistcoat and a neatly trimmed moustache and a handshake that could crack walnuts. He ushered me into the parlour. 
all good to me, lad, like a drink. Oh, Dad, not the liquor cabinet, sighed the young lady as she ran upstairs. Don't be long, she yelled back. Hmm, now, have I go at this, lad, said Dad, opening said liquor cabinet. All liqueurs, old types, cream de monde, curacao, you name it, I've got to make them myself. Won't be long till you go upstairs and get at it, lad. Here, try this Bailey's. I bet you can't tell it from real one. Well, I downed it quickly, called and good night up the stairs, and made a hasty exit. Oh, I, I do like that Yorkshire saying, there's none so queer as folk. Now, from Yorkshire, we headed down the west coast through the Lakes District of Wales. I painted this portrait of Dylan Thomas after visiting the village he lived in in Wales, Larne. His play for Voices Under Milkwood is my favourite piece of literature. I've read it, I've listened to it, I've watched the movie, I've seen it performed in London by the Welsh National Theatre Company, and it became the preferred bedtime story for both our children, James and Laura. We never got to turn over the first page. The tilt and ride of the language rhythmically rocked them into a seesaw cradle to glide in their dreams in no time. Here's a snippet. Feel free to close your eyes. It's a play for voices. The boys are dreaming wicked or of the bucking ranches of the night and the Jolly Rogers Sea and the anthracite statues of the horses sleep in the fields and the cows in the byres and the dogs in the wet-nosed yards and the cats nap in the slant corners or lope sly, streaking and needling on the one cloud of the roofs. You can hear the dew falling and the hushed town breathing. Night-night. Oh. And if you enjoyed this MSing about, please like, share, subscribe, check out our Facebook page and our website msingabout.com.au. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.